Well, hello there and welcome back to the very latest episode of my Love Machine podcast. Now, today we've got a great topic for you. It is called Heartbroken to Heart Open. Now, everybody of some degree will experience loss at some point in their life. And my guest today is the wonderful Destiny Royale. And she is a transformational life coach who experienced her own form of loss. And she is also now a grief support counsellor. She helps others to navigate their way through loss, life and everything in between. She has helped people go from feeling hopeless to hopeful, confused to clear and confident. Heartbroken to heart open, hence the name of the podcast, powerless to powerful and to go and live their most meaningful lives. I felt very inspired by you reading my own words back that, I mean, did you did you? a great job. Thank you very much. You did a great job. It's it's so lovely to get you on here. We talked a few months ago about getting onto my podcast and we had some great yes. conversation and I was really excited to do it. And then summer got in the way and mm-hmm. life got in the way. So I got you back and we finally had emails that worked <laughs> and we got there in the end, <laughs> we didn't bounce back. And so exactly. thank you so much for your patience to get you on here. I have wanted you, you were going to be my first video guest. And you, maybe you will be at some point when I do my YouTube, but I want to talk to you today about your amazing story about how you experience your own form of loss and how you've used that to change the lives of others. So the best thing to do, if you can explain to my listeners a bit more about who you are and and what happened to you. Yeah, gosh. I, so we only have an hour? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm We have kidding. half an hour. <laughs> I, or half an hour. Oh, wow. I really have to get, condense it. I'm teasing. So first of all, thank you so much for having me on. And I'm glad. I believe in the timing and the divinity and destiny in it. So yes, there was a little gap, but we're here and perhaps the audience are the right people that will listen at the right time. So thank you for having me on. And, you know, in a nutshell, I think, you know, Part of this new journey that I've been on is helping others find their way through life, loss, and everything in between. And I say that because not only have I personally lived it, but that's what this thing is called life. Sometimes we're celebrating, we're seeking change, we're, you know, getting out of bed with vigor and things to make a difference in our lives. And then life can strike us and bring us to our knees in loss. And that has happened to me in my life. Um, you know, I think we were talking a little bit earlier before we start hit record, but I was sharing about going through a divorce at a young age and, um, you know, various parts of my life that I've, you know, like heartbreak, any type of heartbreak or heartache and loss of a relationship, but it was really the tragic and significant loss of my brother, who was my best friend. Oh, I think every time I say it out loud, it still uh, chokes me up, but um my best friend, we came out to Los Angeles for music together. And we just, he was my other half and he passed away and it just took me down, took me in out sideways. And I think through that experience that made me confront so many parts of, it's not just the loss of that relationship or him, but also parts of ourselves. And, you know, so that just really, um, affected me deeply as anyone that's experienced the death or the loss of someone significant in their life. Yet at the same time, it also put me on this path of service and helping others and giving space to that holding space of grief and loss and love. And so um, I hope I did that in a nutshell, (laughs) because that's kind of the the story of. You um, did. Can I ask you a few questions about this this loss that you had? I know yeah. it's a very deeply personal topic, but we are discussing it. So that is no, the very nature of this. I'm, and I'm open book. You can ask me anything. And we have agreed as well to have fun with this episode and to laugh about things. Yes. We, we, yes. I, I handle grief in a in a sense of humour sort of way. I, I like to laugh at things. That's how I, my coping mechanism is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you've encouraged me off podcast to develop that <laughs> and to do more of that. So we'll yes. make this fun because now. Yes. So, well, 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 here we go. Here's the killer question. How long ago was this? this loss so yeah so it was in 2011 so it'll actually be 12 years coming up his he passed away two days after his 34th birthday so january 6th was his birthday january 8th he passed and it was sudden he had what they call aortic dissection um and it just very rare something that we were it's actually behind the heart it's the aorta behind the heart and so you know it, it someone that was famous for that. I don't know if you guys were familiar with John Ritter, the actor, but yes, he, yes. yes. So he was the famous 
person that kind of brought light and actually his wife, Amy Yazbek, has an amazing organization called the, the John Ritter Foundation. So brings awareness to that cause. Mm-hmm. Obviously, at the time, I had no idea. I mean, my brother and I were supposed to meet that, you know, two days after his birthday and had these celebrations and, you know, okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And then, you know, he didn't show up for work. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been several years, but in some ways it feels like just yesterday, depending on what day you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, Of course. That's the way it is, isn't it? Because they're always within us, always in our memories and our hearts. And we never really go away completely. They're just there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I believe that I've had my own my dad passed away three years ago. My yeah. grandma died last week, but she was almost 103. So oh, <laughs> it's great. it was expected, but that's a good innings, isn't it? Almost 103. And so but these things happen. And But then you still think it's a shock, isn't it? It's the shock for the whole thing if you're not expecting it. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, while I think we have expectation, of course, we're all going to die at some point. So we, I think, have come to some terms if they're 103 or they're later in life Mm -hmm. there's more of a preparation but it's still a significant loss you know that's still you know something that can invite grief and pain and significance but at the same sense you know perhaps there is some difference in the suddenness or at least in my case with my brother it just was like what you know um yeah i could not imagine i could not imagine how someone would cope and go through that we are not expecting it something just happens and yeah so you there's different emotions that we experience when we go through this sort of thing and there's Mm -hmm. grief there is there's anger there's frustration what what were you what went what happened to you how did you get over all this i know get over is probably a strong phrase but how did you come to terms with this yeah, that's a great question. And you're, I, I love that correction because I wouldn't say I got, I've gotten over it. There are days that I, it's still very present in, in yeah. part of my life, but then at the same sense, time. Um, and I don't know that I necessarily line, align with, oh, time heals because healing tells me that it is, it's, it's no longer a wound and that wound is still there. But I think time does um, perhaps soften it. It's like if you were to cut your arm or have any type of raw wound that has to have time to the rawness to heal, but the scar is still there. And, you know, I obviously do not come up with that analogy. It's, I think in any type of grief or trauma there that has been explained in that way, but that is the best way that I could explain it even for myself. So initially, I mean, I, I, I was shocked, obviously in complete shock, but I think that for some reason, I almost went numb. I I felt very protective of my mom and even my dad. And I just remember feeling like I was angry that they were going to have to go through what I was anticipating. And especially, especially my mom and that I just had this protection. So I just got into fix it mode. I didn't want my mom to have to handle anything, you know, even just the logistics you know, the apartment, he had a ticket on his car that we had to handle. And I just remember calling, making all of those calls. I, I I talked to the coroner and I don't say that because, oh, I did it. I did it for a purpose of, I, I remember being angry of like, my mom shouldn't have to go through this. So I felt very protective and just, I keep putting like this, your audience can't see, but this, my hands over myself, just this very guarded And I don't even think I could access the pain just yet at at that time. I just remember feeling very frozen, numb, angry, and fix it. And just, okay, we're going to go here. We're going to do this. I'm going to make this phone call. And yet there was also this just disbelief. And I, I just felt like out of body. I felt like I was on autopilot. I was waking up. I mean, and I remember even thinking, how was that? How was I even waking up? you know, and I've talked to my mom about this and even other grievers that, you know, I hopefully, um, I don't say hopefully your grievers understand, but if they've gone through this, uh, your audience would understand, but, and perhaps you as well. It's just, there's this disbelief and it's interesting how our body, the physiology, the physical part and the physiological part of our, our body, how it also processes grief, you know, so it really is like a mind, body, soul experience. It is. It's a numbness, like you said, isn't it? To start with, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. a common thing when it's the shock of the whole thing and the realization hits you. Mm-hmm. Things are about to change. And when we talk about 
being heartbroken my sense i'm a dating coach so heartbreak mm-hmm. comes all the time in relationships too not just mm-hmm. through death it comes the same thing happened if you've got a bad breakup or someone wants to leave you or something happens in that way so mm-hmm. many of my clients come to me they've had some degree of heartbreak everyone mm-hmm. has really to some degree because we all have had broken relationships or things that haven't worked out or some we've lost a loved one somewhere along the line mm-hmm. but do you think that the same emotions happen in both situations whether it's through death or it's from a breakup from a marriage because you you were you were divorced weren't you, you mm-hmm. said, okay. mm-hmm. was that a big shock to you at the time so I love how you it sounds like the question is more around like are there similar feelings I guess from like the loss or grief around a relationship or a loss yes. as opposed to death and I would say in a just general space of universal yes sadness um you know grief the grief experience heartbreak that is associated with you know, perhaps even anger, depending on the situation, the circumstances, even if it's amicable, there's still sadness and, you know, the what's next and there's fear associated with that. So I would say generally speaking, but then I would say that there's some differences and I'm only speaking for myself. I'm not just assessing this and this is what's going to happen, but I was heartbroken with my, my marriage at the time. Um, and I think I've already shared, I always, my disclaimers, my ex and I are great, great friends and all is well. And, but I was young, first of all, I got married young, or at least I think I, you know, I'm 47 now, but at the time I got married at 23, got divorced by the time I was 28, I think 27, 28. And I think that the heartbreak was, I mean, devastating. I was shocked. Uh, not necessarily, we were both, you know, I think the shock was just that things were changing. I came mm-hmm. from an understanding and, you know, a Christian background. My dad is a minister and had just some beliefs that I don't, I no longer connect to. But at the time I was conditioned to believe like divorce was this horrible thing and I'm a failure. And I, and then there's the religion religious aspects around that. So I, that got all dismantled. So it wasn't just the divorce itself and, Mm -hmm. you know, the heartbreak of the relationship changing, but I was changing and that scared me. And then that made me how to look at certain things in my life and look at what I believed and what I didn't believe. And so I just felt that was actually one of my first, what I call my spiritual awakening, rattling of my soul, dark night of the soul. And, but to get to your answer, even with all of that, that I was life-changing, life-transforming. I thought at the time, like that was, you know, and I had, I've had some childhood stuff. I can't remember if we've gone into, so all that, but it was my brother that really took me even (laughs) deeper to my knees. And that heartbreak was very different because the finality with the relationship ending, in some ways, I would say, you know, there's, it can be association with rejection or self-worth or value. And that's a different pain and a a very painful experience when you're being, those questions come up and you're confronting with the death of somebody, even though I would say a relationship can feel like a death, it's a death of a relationship. It's a death of parts of yourself. The, the death of someone is I'm I'm getting emotional again. It it is. That's, I mean, it's final, you know, it is. So I think there can be some differences in what that, but I would never want to measure that or tell someone that's grieving a relationship that, oh, oh, that's nothing because you haven't, I I don't, it's too complex and it's all grief. I think the main difference is, as you said, it's something that's, it's final because if it's a loved one, then no one else is ever going to come and replace them or take that part in your Mm -hmm. your life again. But Mm -hmm. with a partner, if it's a divorce or a breakup, it never seems like it at the time because it is a death in its own right. It's death of your memories, death of your expectations, death of what your hopes and dreams were. But mm-hmm. you, there is an opportunity there that you can, mm-hmm. in time, find someone else and it's going to mm-hmm. learn new new activities and new adventures. Mm-hmm. You can't do that when you, you have a someone that's close to you who's died, of course. Yes. But you yes. mentioned how you questioned faith and you, it helped you have a spiritual yeah. awakening. Did mm-hmm. you start to think, what happened? Because I'd like to know more about that, really, because... Did you think, okay, there can't be a God because this happened to me or maybe there is a God because I now feel his presence. What what happened to you? Yeah, you know, I think what that did for me at that time, I'm, I'm thinking back because I've always felt very spiritually driven, very, I'm a seeker, you know, a spiritual seeker, but I was also taught a certain way and this was the way. And so 
when I started to, I don't even want to say depart from that, but start questioning, I was even having guilt about questioning that, that something is wrong with me because, you know, I was raised in a very specific framework, right? Mm. So then when life happens, such as a divorce, which really goes against that, that framework, not only where I'm having to deal with the divorce, I'm dealing with the framework. Is this even, what does this all mean? So I think, and I, how I view my divorce, it was one of the, in, I still view my wedding day and my marriage as one of the best things that's happened to me. I can still hold that space. And equally my divorce and the separation of that is what brought me to my true self. But I had to look at what I believed in, what I didn't. So to answer your question, in some ways, I actually felt it brought me closer to my spiritual understanding. And I mean, I was just like a sponge. I, everything was changing. I was drawn to so many different religions and, and, and even just teachings and philosophies. I mean, I just was allowing myself and just opening myself up. And, but I, I have to say, I've, and then I felt like I, 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 I don't want to say that I got it because I will always say I'm a student of life and we're always learning and growing. But again, and then a few years later after my brother, I felt like everything that I'd felt like I'd come to know just got thrown to pieces. And, and I was really into, I don't know, I guess I felt like I had an understanding of the afterlife and I had an understanding of this and that. And then I felt like nothing matters. Nothing exists. What's the point of even being here? We're going to die. And if this God is real, then how would he do this? So it made me have a different, I think more of the anger towards whatever this spiritual entity or intelligence or source or God or universe or whatever that is. I had some words, (laughs) you know, (laughs) which was very different than my, the pain and the, the breakup. I felt that was more of a, as painful as that was, I I also felt like it was, there was a liberation that happened after my brother. That was more of I felt I, I can't even articulate the word. It, it just felt like a betrayal. It felt like a um, it, it brought me to a different understanding or I don't even know what understanding is the word, a different experience of the journey and the quest yeah. towards that. Does so that felt, I hope that answer that. <laughs> it does. You felt sort of let down. You felt uh, definitely. forsaken is probably the word, isn't it? Forsaken. That's yeah. it. That I. That's the word. It, it yeah. felt very forsaken from a, yes. Yeah. And people experience that as well. In any sort of relationship breakup, they feel mm-hmm. if God's brought us together or something's brought us together in the universe, why are they separating us? And mm-hmm. that's what happens. But Absolutely. In a, in a minute, we're going to turn this topic conversation onto how to be more heart open. That's the nature of it. And that's the more sort of fun part of this. But what would you say to someone who is going through this experience at the moment of any sort of heartbreak? Mm -hmm. How do you help people? How do you support them through this? And is there ultimately light at the end of the tunnel there? Or is it always going to be a darkness? Yeah. Well, there's a few ways that I want to answer that briefly. Um, First of all, you just said like support. I encourage people to get support. You know, that's one of the reasons I do the grief support. I do grief support groups and I see the value of having that support around them. Someone that, or people rather that have gone through similar experiences and and can just feel that commonality and just having the support. So having support in general, I think there's different approaches to the grief experience. There's the grief, the human, the psychology of it. Then there's the spiritual part of it. There's the physical part. I mean, there's so much. So to have that that just support around you because it is not an easy process. As far as is there hope, you know, I, I went through a very dark period of my life after, after this. And when you are in that, it is very hard to see the light and the outside of that. And what I would tell someone, not only from my own experience, but just in working with people is that if you allow your grief to guide the way, which sounds counter- counterintuitive, but rather than resisting it and quote unquote, moving forward or on and, and getting busy or bypassing, even though we all have our ways, but when you can actually move with your grief, that is going to lead you out of it in a way that you can now find ways to hold. I still have moments of 
pain and sorrow and sadness and the grief is still there if, for me and most people I talk to, but then you start to open up yourself to the light. You start to open yourself up to the hope. It's not one or the other. And I think, and, and I can speak from my own experience. I was actually afraid to move forward because I felt my, no, my brother's right here. My brother's with the pain. And I was afraid. I didn't even want people to see that I would laugh because I thought, oh, they think I'm just, I'm fine. I'm over it. And when you start to realize that you can, it's all present, it's all, it, it's all a part of the process. So going from heartbroken to heart open, I believe is, or powerless to powerful, all those, you know, the trans transformation transition is by moving through it and knowing that that is okay. And that's normal. And it's not a linear, like, okay, you're going to be mad today. And then tomorrow you're going to be this. And the next day you're going to be all of those things. And you might still be those things, but you will, the light will come and the hope. And even, and that's the, that's the opening. I feel like your heart is just broken to pieces and in between those pieces is the light. And it just starts to come together and you find yourself wanting to, I, I would say for myself, I'm in some ways, I'm not even the same person, but in some other ways, I kind of brought me to the core of who I am because you realize what matters and the, and the values and gives you that clarity of what you want, who you are, where you're going, why you want what you want. And you can go on to live a, a life of the meaning and the purpose and, and the power that you want it to be, whatever that looks like. So I hope that, you know, in a nutshell, but that's what I believe, but that's let your perfect. grief guide you. Perfect. And I think when people have had this in relationships due to breakups and divorces, that's when they come to me. They seek me out. Maybe when they, yeah. someone's gone for a death, they come and seek you out. But for me, people have decided now is the time that they are ready mm -hmm. to give this another go and to see what might be out there. And it's a scary yeah. time for many people. It's absolutely terrifying. They're not sure what to do, who to turn to. Luckily, I'm very fortunate people do come to me. I had a client session in a similar situation before, hasn't dated properly for years and years and years. And I had a conversation, she saw me actually talk recently at an event, which is about heartbreak. And mm. my first speaking engagement in three years, she was so inspired by me, she wanted to work with me. But I could tell on the initial phone call, she was a bit nervous, wasn't sure it was the right thing to do. At the end of this session, she said to me, James, I am so pleased I went to that event. The universe aligned mm. and I saw you and I'm so pleased that I work with you. I feel really happy now. This is the start of a new adventure, a new journey. So that's yes. what I so to transition very subtly into the next part of this, <laughs> using that as my little bridge that slides into that, yes. you started dating again using the dating apps, haven't you? <laughs> am I right? Gonna... Am, am I psychic? <laughs> you were psychic. How did you know? It, you know, it's I, first of all, you did a beautiful transition there because I know we're talking about, uh, you know, there's a heaviness, I guess, if you will, when we're talking about grief, yes. but hopefully we kind of transition to the lighter part yes. of that and then going into my dating. Uh, but I think I mentioned when you would ask like, okay, what do you want? You know, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> so I added to the mix. Okay. Well, now, first of all, I just want to say I, it's been several years since I've been divorced, but um you know, we go through, have different experiences, but I've never been an active dater. Like I've always either been involved in a situation or a relationship or single just on my own. Very much that is how I am. So just two weeks ago, for the sake of being open, for the sake of putting it out there to the universe or whatever, that I'm ready, I'm available, let's do this. I went on two dating apps. And I've never done this before. And it kind of goes, I don't want to say against, but I, I, I've always met people from kismet type of situations or, you you know, just organic. I haven't mm -hmm. been out looking. I'm going to go find. So in a way, I felt like dating apps. That's what I'm doing. I'm going on an app and I'm going to find someone. And it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been, it's definitely. Already in two weeks. It's, in two <laughs> weeks. In two weeks. And we'll see how long when we do our next podcast, if I uh, am still on, but. So it's been a journey. Also, if I could add as a 47 year old woman in Los Angeles, you know, I mean, it's, it's interesting being in this space in my life and I'm, yeah, That's I can feel like word. some questions. <laughs> That's the word that everyone uses when it comes to this. Interesting. <laughs> they never say it's been an amazing, yes. wonderful experience normally. Well, they do. Of course they do because they meet somebody and it works out. Yes. But it's yes. been interesting. So which apps are you on? We can name them. As long as you name two okay. of them. Yeah. Okay. So I went with Hinge. Best and then one. I also, yeah. and I'm going to say, I have a disclaimer. 
that before I tell you it's this Tinder, one. isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, right. I mean, I've had people that have met some um, great people on there, but yeah. So I had resistance to this app. I'm going to tell you in a second. I was like, absolutely not. I'm not going to be on this app because I don't want to make the first move. I am maybe traditional. I like having someone make the move, but it's I know Bumble, it's, isn't it? it's Bumble. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. let me just tell you, I know that as a as a coach, when there is resistance or when you're saying absolutely not, that's usually when things can open up for you. So by with a conscious decision that I felt, you know what, usually when I've said absolutely not, something has happened. I have my little dog, you can probably hear. And I said, absolutely no senior dogs. Sure mm-hmm. enough, I get a call, this little dog who's, you know, 12 at the time needed a home and I fell in love with her. So now I have this cute little dog that I swore, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do an older dog. So you just never know. So I went on Bumble and, you know, I, yeah, I would still say the the process feels the same. Um, I'm not sure. I let me tell you what I feel was coming up for me. I in in I'm sure as a coach you deal with this as well. We work with clients that they they want they see the big picture. They want relationship or they want the love of their life or they want mm. these things. But oftentimes we're we're not clear of what that is going to require of you and what that's going to bring up in you. So while I genuinely can tell you, I am ready. I'm ready for love. I'm ready for a conscious partner in my life. I'm ready for these things. But then in this process, I was already getting annoyed that, oh shoot, I'm going to have to, you know, my, my schedule is very busy, especially when you're doing coaching and I'm um, sorry if my earrings are going off, um, but you're, you have, you have to make space. And it made me realize and is there some something I need to look in myself? Because I say I'm available, but am I available? I say that I want to bring someone in my life, but do I even have space in my life? And what would it mean or look like to create this space? What do I need to shift? So that's what I'm actually taking away that it's, and it's a good thing because I am self-reflective. I am aware. I want to look at this. So the dating apps are actually serving a bigger purpose that it's making me look at myself. It's making me look at, oh, that's right. I actually have to be available to, to go on a date. Ah, I should probably figure that out. So it's, it's a good thing. And that's, you know, I just want to tie that heartbreak to heart open. I believe that everything is information. And it's, I feel like even, and it's not quite as drastic. I I don't feel I'm in a heartbreak, broken space, but I feel like this experience is cracking me open in ways that I didn't even know were closed off. I guess that's where I'm coming from. And so I'm willing and ready to, okay, I say I'm available. What would it take for me to become available? What do, and what is my resistance in that? And what's coming up for that? So it's no. it's been a journey and it's teaching me some things all in two weeks. Well, that's that's what normally happens though. It is yes. it is a journey. It's a learning process. The whole thing. If I was coaching you, which oh. maybe we'll do one day on a on a YouTube video. <laughs> I've got okay, ideas for that already. It. I'd love to see your profile and dissect it for you and look at what all the interactions you've got. But that needs to be on a video. Yeah, and you have to yeah. expose yourself to that. But I would say that you are maybe nervous about meeting somebody and there was a slight fear of rejection and that is why you're closed off the idea because you're used to having your own life and independence you're an independence lady but you want Mm. to have someone in your life you're open to that and you've got one as a companion but what i would say to you is this you're probably having conversations with loads of different people right now and i imagine you're being bombarded by the wrong sort of men as well particularly on hinge rather than than bumble so what i would say to you is focus now on quality rather than quantity quantity definitely and i just want to interject one thing i I appreciate that and i receive that and i'm open and i'm i want to learn to grow i i would say i don't feel and then if something comes up i will let you know i don't feel it's fear of rejection deep down that doesn't feel um accurate for me what it is Mm -hmm. is that I have always been very open-minded and very free-spirited, but I'm also very, I'm, you know, a monogamous, loyal person. And I think it's that combination that I've, I've got my life in such a way. I've been single for many years. I lived by myself for 16 years so far. The idea of, oh, I would have to bring someone in that space. If what I'm saying is true, which it is that I want to have that, that, partner that life partner now you're bringing someone into that world and vice versa that's what's coming up for me more than i don't feel it's a a rejection part it's more of 
oh, I've got to make space and room for this in my life. And I didn't realize that because the big picture makes sense. But then to get to the big picture, you know, when you're coaching someone, you have to, what obstacles would get, what obstacles might be in the way of getting you to that ultimate thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, okay, I need to make myself available for this. I need to give room and space and open myself up. And as far as the quality, the quantity, I feel I probably should be even a little bit more open to, I can be very clear, like, okay, swipe, 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 swipe. Yeah. And perhaps there's some openness that could happen in, in that. So I, that's my, my intuitive sense, even of myself, if I were coaching myself. <laughs> that's wise. But how many people are you currently talking to? Right now, actually, it's kind of they've been like fizzling now. So I, I, uh, the first week it was like I, I was joking, I'm like, who am I? Am I the player? I've got all these. I didn't know. I don't know how these people do it. Where you know they've got all these different dates and people. Can, I was getting overwhelmed by the different conversations. But I will say that that just kind of cleared out. You know, um, I felt that it. I'm pretty intuitive, and I feel like we all are if we access that. And I, but I do try to, that's a big practice in my life and tuning in with myself. So I, I really had to ask, is this aligned with the bigger picture of these conversations? So I, I kind of cleared out a lot of it. So I would say now it's really only two people that, and I don't even know about that, but that's the honest answer. And how long have you been talking to them? Since the beginning, since two weeks. <laughs> so why haven't you met them yet? I met one. I met, you've one. met one. Yeah, I've, I've met right. one. Yeah. So okay. I met one. Um, and how did that yeah. go? You know, it went great in the sense of, I I think that uh, if I'm speaking my end, I can talk to anyone. So most people tell me their life. They, I ha end up half the time coaching them, um, not, li not by desire, but meaning that I can ask questions. You know, I don't want to be too close-minded. I did feel like it went well. It went good. It just there wasn't a lot of reciprocation of asking about me. So it was a lot about his, his life and dreams <laughs> and then some past relation. I, I kind of feel like there's some energy that perhaps needs to be resolved with the next to be on. My intuition is that there's some there uh, that he needs to probably clean up there with um, an ex. So it made me sh not feel like that is the right thing right now. But you're still talking to him. No, that was, uh, that's only been a few days. So, I mean, technically okay, there okay. hasn't been any, so yeah, I mean, but it hasn't been unmatched or never talked to me again because it's been too soon. I mean, I would be open if you wanted to open up a conversation again, but um, no, there hasn't been okay. any. And the other gentleman? What's the other there? gentleman? Yeah. The other gentleman, it's been some conversation and now it's been, you know, let's get, I'm, I'm finding that I I'm, I'm big on follow through and follow up. And so I like to see that. And, you know, there's been talk of, okay, what are you doing this weekend? Maybe we should get together. Let's, I would love to meet you. I've been open. Like, absolutely. I mean, there's some scheduling things there. And so I'm waiting for that, not waiting, let me be clear, but um, it's kind of left in that. So I feel like if I don't see that soon, that follow up, then it's, I have no problem meeting in person. Let me be clear. I actually prefer that. I, I don't need to talk on apps for two weeks or three weeks to do that I'm fine with getting that off the ground I think it's pretty clear when you meet someone <laughs> it is but what I would suggest is that if he's not making a move and asking you out when is he going to do that and exactly I always recommend that you only talk for a few days and get on with meeting them because what you're doing now you're still having conversations with him texting yet when he feels like it and it's not going anywhere that's a waste of your time. But at this stage, I agree. You're, yes. you're, you're still in the exploration phase of using these apps. So you, you can do that. But if you're yeah. focused on the end goal, I would say cut both those men off. <laughs> yeah. Pretty soon. And I'm pretty much almost with this last person, um, pretty much there. I, I, I try to be, you know, just to, for clarity, there has been that conversation on, on his end of asking to get together. And there was some legitimate things that I just wasn't able to do that. So I don't want to put that blame on him. I was not available, not because I'm not emotionally available, meaning I legitimately You're busy. Past week, I was busy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So then we talked about, okay, let, perhaps this weekend where it's getting a little wishy-washy. It's not clear. Like, okay, how's this day? So if I don't see that, you're right. Closing it off because it just, yeah. I, I'm I would end up you. frustrating you over time if he's like that all the time. 
I'm absolutely. I, I'm pretty clear. Actually, on my dating profile, I say, you know, it says one thing about dating me. And I, I say, I'm pretty clear. You'll know where you stand with me. There's not, I'm not one, even some of the conversations that we've had, maybe I'm, um, whatever, breaking the dating app etiquette, but I actually tell them, you know, thank you. This I've enjoyed this conversation. I just don't feel like I, it's going to go further for me. Mm -hmm. Wish you well blessings goodbye basically i don't like just unmatching or di that's just not me whether that makes me uncool or whatever you can but that's how i always am with anyone i'm going to be clear on what i'm doing and why so i feel like i'm pretty clear but i also want to be i'm trying to be open i'm trying <laughs> it's important to be open and like i said you are still in the stages of getting used to these apps and they are yeah. a tool they are just a tool and a, a, tool. a lot of luck comes into this and to yes. who you interact with. But I think any advice I give people is to use the apps, but keep going out in the real world, meeting people, go to events, go to parties, go to talks, yes. go to the gym, go to the coffee shop, Absolutely. start conversations. And yes, that's, that's what's going to happen for sure. It is, and you'll do that because you're doing that yes. anyway. You're keeping busy. Yes. But yes. don't waste time on the wrong people. <laughs> that's what I'd say. But be open minded. Yes. If, there's, if there's a, a connection, it can take time to grow. So it's a slight Absolutely. conflict there. But if you, you'll know if you've got any sort of attractions and if it's going anywhere. But, Absolutely. But I, keep... I believe energy does not lie. So I think you can really feel the energy as well. And I think we have to listen to ourselves. And it doesn't mean you're being closed off or mean. Or if you really tune into yourself. And, and that's what I've been trying to tell myself. I think where the app comes in that is different for me is that it's really set up to base it on these external factors even though i think energetically you can still feel the essence of someone you're still like okay am i attracted or am i not you're looking at an age and then the algorithm i mean there's so many things that i, I actually don't even really it goes i don't want to say against but it's out of my comfort zone in that because i am so i do like feeling the energy and connection and you know i've i i've that's a big principle in my life. So, but I do think it's possible. And I think you can have conversations and feel still within the words, you can still feel the intentions and energy of someone you and can. vice versa. I just suggest to all my clients that don't become pen pals, talk for a day and then meet <laughs> them. talk on the telephone if you want to, but go out and meet them. Otherwise yes. you're left in two weeks conversation, three weeks of drag by. You're still texting. How was your day? What are you up to? When are we going to meet? Oh yeah. No. Like I've already cut that. people like that. It, th these two people I'm talking about, we have one we met, the other one has been an active um, effort to get together. And there has been some genuine um, scheduling. Yeah, the happens. other ones, uh, no, I'm not. How's your day? How's your day? And it's just, it's boring, it will drain boring and annoying. Yes. Your yeah. energy is special and, and it's to be safe for the right people. But you're Aww. absolutely right. This is all about being heart open. So being open-minded, giving it a best yes. go that you can, and you are doing this. And so yes. I, what I'd like to do, if in a few weeks or three months when we talk again on my YouTube channel, if you're still doing this, I'd like to look at your profiles and tell <gasps> you what I think, my honest review. Yikes. Thing, because I can tell you what's going right and what's going wrong. I love doing this. Okay. Other coaches okay. fire me in to do this quite a lot. And I love I, it. I enjoy it, but it, I do it in a nice way. And it doesn't mean I'm always right, but I usually... What like. I wish you would do is do it for the men. <laughs> I, I do, I, feel... I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I feel men. bad saying that because I feel like it, there's a judgment there, but some of these profiles, it it makes me want to coach them and go in a completely different direction because it's like, why would you say this? Why would you yeah. put certain things that are being said? It's shocking to me. And yeah. I'm, I'm thinking you really think, I mean, I don't know. Um, and then some of the pictures it's, like, really, that's the picture you you chose? And I'm not talking about being good looking or not good looking. I'm talking about just smiling. <laughs> I, I, I don't even get me started. That is a whole podcast in and of itself. So, yes, if it I'm is. still on the app, we'll see. But if I am, I'm, I'm it. game. It's, yeah, I'm I love game. doing it. I, I do coach lots of men how to build their profiles online and as well as many things, other things as well. And I have many success stories because all a man's got to do is smile and have decent pictures and have a good profile. Yes. He's going to up his game and be blasting away the competition isn't he by just yes. interacting in the right way it's not about so much about looks it's about lighting smiling looking approachable and many women don't do this they have the first pictures on their phone and then on a drunken night out or scowling on a, on a pouting in a on a selfie <laughs> not the best way but i know yeah. yours would be amazing of course they will <laughs>
I mean, of course. I'll, you know. I've I, seen I'm your Instagram. Open. You have good pictures. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. But it's it's a journey and I'm I would love your feedback and I'm I'm open. If I'm still on the apps, we're I'm I'm trying to see where that is at. I've got some things happening more in person and I just feel intuitively that that might be more my path. I feel your that. Point. I feel that within the next two weeks, you're going to stop using the apps. I'm not using them anymore. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I just got chills because I just said to myself, if in two weeks, <laughs> yeah, I, I literally told myself that you might be onto something. So check in. You can check in with me in two weeks. If, I will not check even in for with the you. podcast, but I will. when this can... goes live, I'll tell you. But I also think you're then going to go back on them again if you're still single in another month's time. And you end up in the cycle of dating that everyone goes through. They give it a couple of weeks. It's okay. Don't when really you meet someone. A period of time goes by. Oh, I try a different app. I try and do it yes. again. See what happens. It doesn't yes. change things because your your secret score, your algorithm score, does not change. And there's mm. a way of resetting the whole thing. But if you need this advice in a few weeks or a few months' time when we speak again, I'll explain this to you. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll look forward to it. And by the way, you're I have many friends that are on the apps, and it's that they're on and off of them for years. It's, it's actually a joke. Like, oh, here I am again on you know Hinge again, or but yeah. I will say that, and I I know we're on a time thing, and I don't want to lead your conversation here, but I will say that I believe that again, energy and when you're open, it all exists. I have friends that have met and have great relationships from these apps. I have friends and I actually even have a client that has been married through them. It all can happen. And I think when you keep your heart open yeah. and you can try to dismantle some of the things energetically that keep us from having the thing we want, it will come. It will, you will attract it if you, you know, align with the law of attraction kind of philosophy, but it will come. So whether it's through an app, whether it's at the grocery store, whether it is, whatever it is, it, you will invite that in your life. And I really, in my heart, believe that I believe it for myself. I'm just trying to be open to more. What is stopping me then? What would keep me from that? And the apps made me it's making me step out of my comfort zone, basically. So whether I meet the guy on the app or not, I honestly can say it's irrelevant to me. And I don't want to, I'm not trying to be cool. Like, oh, I don't need that. I, I genuinely mean that it's, I'm not attached to that. I'm more of, okay, this is, I'm proud of myself because I'm doing something I wouldn't, I actually had an absolutely not attitude about like, no, I'm going to, I believe in destiny and the, you know, serendipitous and I'm going to run into him on the street and I might, but I, so I, I think that whatever the avenue, it it will come and it all exists, if that makes sense. I agree. And that might well happen to you. But putting yourself in that situation outside your comfort zone is what's going to bring it together. You're mm -hmm. never going to meet someone if you don't go and try and do these things. So yes. So that's being a heart open when you're talking. Yeah. That's being heart open and yeah, just yeah. being willing and open to the experience and even the information. What's coming up for me here? What am I resisting? What feels good what doesn't feel good you know all of it is opportunities for your own growth and transformation and cracking and loosening yourself up so i'm i'm in for it i'm i'm open to it even if it's uncomfortable like that's oh. what like i do things that might be uncomfortable i have to as a coach yeah. i push myself even yes. doing a live event a couple of weeks ago i haven't done that for three years i push myself to do it because i have to teach my clients to live their dreams outside the comfort zones i did a fun run in august i did a himalayan bridge walk thing over like in the Ooh. air all sorts of weird things i do it because i test myself because we can't live our lives in fear and i think it's always never going to work out we have to be open and optimistic but yes, you know what i always living proof of your work i try and there's more i could be doing on that and I, I always push myself to do more things but i like to always end these podcasts on sort of jerry springer style motivational speech Ooh. but you've done that yourself so well in the last few things that you've said about oh. how you can go from heartbroken <laughs> to heart open so well and you summarize that and it's just, and I think just to add to that, really, it's just a case of just doing something. There's no need to rush into any sort of new relationship in, mm -hmm. when it comes to breakups and relationships. As you don't have to, you don't need somebody, but you're open to this as it could be a new adventure. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to happen. And I'm pretty sure that some way or another, by the end of this year, you will have a new partner. And, <gasps> but... Oh, are you predicting my destiny? Ooh. Why? Why not? If I tell you it's true, <laughs> you believe it, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know, exactly. I already got lit up that. Yeah. Okay. I like this. I like it yeah. resonates. I I'm, and you know, to your point, and I just wanted to add one other thing that I do work with clients. I also yeah. think that it's really important to examine your relationship with yourself. And I really believe that it, what you're wanting in a partnership 
you have to be that. And one of the things these apps have made me realize, well, are there ways that I'm not available to myself, that I'm not committing to myself, that I'm not showing up for myself? So when you're talking about, you know, getting, um, it sounds like a little, I don't want to say cho- like a chopping block, but, you know, don't waste time. Are there areas I could be doing that with myself? And that would be something I would really encourage even the audience and including myself, all of us, is that we also have to look at how are we being in our best, our best versions of ourselves and having the best relationship with ourselves, if that makes sense. And I think that's yeah. really important. And that's something I've been trying to do myself of giving myself the the very thing that I'm seeking and wanting and hoping to experience by way of a new relationship and partner. And I can do that right now because I can be that for me. That's amazing. I always try and do that. And I have my goals, yeah. I have my things. It's never easy, but I think just being nice to yourself, whatever you yes. do in life, just being kind to yourself is the most important thing. Yeah. I've got loving my hopes yourself. My- Loving myself. I'm always thinking things I could be doing, things I should be doing. And sometimes I can't be bothered. And sometimes mm-hmm. I get on with it. Like going for yeah. a run. Oh, it's too yes. cold. It's raining. I'm not going to go for a run. Other days, I, I will go for that run. And I think just yes. be kind to yourself and just do what you want to do. Because you are with yourself for as long as you've got. So you might as well be nice to <laughs> yes. yourself and not torment yourself. Right? And, Absolutely. And if you find a soulmate along the way, it's just a bonus. It's and, a bonus. Yes. I love and, that. And I hope you find yours at some point soon. So that was my internet. <laughs> Just to add one more thing here very quickly. Can you tell everybody how they can find out more about you and what you do? Yes, go on Hinge. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hinge, kidding. Hinge, type in. <laughs> yeah, type in. Only I'm the good. next two weeks, though. Be quick. Only two, yeah, you've got two weeks. By the time um, this goes live, you'll be off the app. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is so fun. You have such a beautiful, bright, funny spirit. You're so genuinely, I feel like we could talk honestly. I do, I do. You are such (laughs) a great spirit. Uh, So yes, they can go to me, my Instagram, my website, it's all my name, Destiny Ray L. I hope that you'll tag that because my my last name is spelled R-A-E-L. But Instagram is one of the best ways. And then of course my website and, you know, I always try to offer a complimentary, you know, if someone just wants to have a conversation and see if it's the right fit, if they would want to go deeper in their work with themselves. And, you know, this, I always say my work is getting to the soul of you, you know, and you live inward out. So whatever area that is and wherever season you're at in your life, wherever you're at in your life, um, I, I, I got you, I can support you in that. And so feel free to reach out. And even if it's just a conversation to see if I'm the right fit, but Instagram website. And if you put those on your, um, the, the, my show notes, don't you worry, show, you'll, be on that. you'll I, see that. You'll see that. Okay, on my I couldn't get the word page. link out of my brain. I was like the, 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 the links, <laughs> the links are going to go in. Don't worry. Yes, your head yes. will be on the graphic and everything. So <laughs> wonderful. So please send me that. But this is so wonderful. I know we could talk for hours and hours and hours, but I'm going to, <laughs> I've got another client shortly. So I'm going to go turn yes. this off. But one of the talks, <laughs> and then we'll talk again. And then hopefully this is the start of many lovely conversations. So I wish you all the best in the next two weeks. Hopefully you'll find somebody. And thank you so yes. much for joining me. Bye for now. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to give you a free copy of my latest book, which you can download right now from my website, jamespriest.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you could share the love by taking a few seconds to write a positive review on the iTunes store right now. See you next time.